Hey guys, EST here, and I've got a whole bunch of ultra low budget solar panels here bought from various random vendors, all Chinese and all exaggerating their specs. They're all oriented towards charging small batteries and small electronics like cell phones and electric pulse lighters, but are any of them any good? I think the answer will actually surprise you by the end of the video, especially when I put the prices up. Now I put all of them to the test on an extremely sunny day in the northern midwest in late May to see how much power they can generate and how angle sensitive they are and a couple other factors. So of course none of the vendors sponsored this video nor would I let them have, so let's just dive in. Alright, first test we've got the smallest one. Uh, a little bit of a gloss coating on here, but not much damage to this one. I haven't used it much. Nice little buck converter that goes to a USB-A socket. How about that? Let's plug it in and see what it does. If you're wondering, this is a buck converter. Yes, they're about that big. And here's a much more up-to-date one. I'm getting a couple of these in the mail really shortly, actually. This uses a USB-C connector, and it has some better chips to control the charging. Now, everything in this video uses really, really old buck converters that spit out USB-A. Because this is the budget video. It was the cheapest ones I could find. All right, propped up facing the sun. We've got 3.7 watts. Not bad. Pretty constant, too. That does tend to be how solar panels work if it's not cloudy. But uh, it's nice to see no fluctuations and no funny business going on in the electronics. I'm going to move it around, see if we can get it higher. Nah. Making it worse. Yeah, I really did. I did choose a pretty good mounting angle when I went to test these. 3.7 wow for this little tiny thing i mean this thing's the size of my hand that's pretty impressive so next up we've just got a physically larger one let's see what it does so this one has a buck converter with a little led to let you know when it's working kind of nice and it comes with hookups that can go to a suction cup oh there we go 3.9 okay but um this one does have some scuffs on the surface uh, if you're going to buy them, they usually come in, you know, low-density polyethylene sleeves. Um, I'd strongly recommend using these because you'll keep the surface from looking like the way that one does. So I'm sure I'm losing a tiny little bit there. Let me see if I can get it above 3.9. Yep, okay, okay. A little bit more, ooh, 4.3. A little bit more angle-specific. Not bad. Next up, we've got one that's really similar but a different finish. Um, more of a matte finish. This one's like a gloss protective layer, but the gloss protective layer got all scratched up. Uh, right about, yeah, there, you can see. Wow, not good. Um, not sure if the same thing would happen to this one. This might just be plain old uh, solar, but I did notice that when I was driving around and testing these, uh, it was blinding me. Is that something you want your uh, solar panel to do? To reflect that much light i i'm pretty sure they're supposed to do the opposite of that actually now this one is a carrying handle it's got the same little grommets on here for uh suction cup gear meters and a standard buck converter with an led i do wonder if these can produce a little bit more than they're saying but the buck converter can't do very much but uh based on what year these were produced i think they can probably do 2.1 amps oh that is very surprising 2.9 really wow i guess when it reflects light it really doesn't work very well <laughs> let me get this out of here i'm gonna hold this up see if i can get a little better three wow this one was advertised on a chinese website as 30 watts Mm-hmm. <laughs> sure it is wow unbelievable 3.2 just for a second that's the highest i could get it Oh, wait, 313. A little directionally sensitive, but unless you get a really fancy one, that's just what they are. 3.3 on a good day. Wow. It looks like this coating was put on the plastic. It's like a layer. I guess the same texture over top the plastic as it is over top the solar. And I think that that's really reflecting the light, which is really, really, really stupid. Next up is my new toy from Naztec. I think uh, my parents got this at uh, some kind of like Amazon box return store reseller type of place. So uh, let's find out if it even works. But that looks like a lot of surface area to me. By the way, this is where they keep the buck converter in this one. Behind a zipper. I bet that's not truly waterproof. All right, we are getting a massive eye-watering 4.5 watts 
I think this was rated for a lot higher than that. Please don't tell me that it has dual buck converters and that it's actually five watts per USB output. My gosh. Aha, 6.2 watts. I moved it to the USB port over one because some of these tend to have one that's limited to five volt one amp just for safety to charge like really, really weak old stuff. And then the second one will go up to 2.1 amps. It's like your standard buck converter circuit. Um, but I noticed it was four or five no matter what I was doing. I would tilt it, I'd partially cover it, it was still 4.5, meaning that it was being limited by the actual circuitry, not the solar panel itself. Let me just check it with a different USB cable in case they were lying about the spec on this fine, fine quality pink cable. Well, isn't that interesting? I put in a much, much higher quality cable and I'm getting 8.3 watts. Huh. I think we know what that means. All right, just for completion's sake here, I got this up to 9.1 watts, but uh, because it's foldable, I had to use both hands to hold it, so I couldn't really film this, but uh, so uh, upwards of 10 watts. Very, very, very nice, the winner so far, and it folds up to protect itself. I don't like the overall design. Uh, I'd like to get a C port one instead of an A port one, and I don't like that the other socket was limited, but uh, it is technically winning. I suppose I'll have to look up the price. Oh, I should also mention that these are heavily bowing for an unknown reason, and it won't actually fold back up. Uh, I think it was magnets holding it. Uh, oh, not no more. If I were to shake this at all, it, it just goes. Just terrible design. Not impressed with NASTEC on this unit. All right, retested all the others. They got the exact same voltage. So uh, it was just a limitation of the cable, but none of the solar panels were capable of going any higher. So the numbers are still valid. And this one is actually 10 watts capable, allegedly, because it's gigantic. <laughs> Let's find out what this one does. By the way, that is a lot of cells in series in parallel. I mean, this is, compared to the size of this, let's just give a size comparison. Yeah, that'll probably get you up there. Hey, wait a minute, we're getting absolutely nothing off this one. Well, why would that be? Probably because that charge controller won't turn on without a battery connected, and this doesn't count. So we actually need to go hook this up to my car battery. All right, we are live. And uh, in case you didn't catch the little Easter egg before, Heck yeah, I put a K&N in my Corolla. So here's a fun little problem. We're getting 3.5 watts on that USB port just through the battery. I actually have the solar panel upside down in the shade right now. Let's see if uh, that's actually the world's worst buck converter and it's actually a one amp five volt, which would approach five watts. Boy, that would be something. All right, we have our answer. It did jump up the voltage and it is definitely charging, but um, 3.4 watts because those USB ports are garbage because this charge controller is garbage. So I would bypass this completely and hook the solar panel up to like a loose buck converter that I just have and know is spec'd properly and then try to run this, but it's 18 volts and I actually don't currently own a buck converter that'll do 18 volts. So first of all, we might be picking up some resistance with this like 15 feet of cable, even though I think it's like 12 gauge. Um, secondly, if I were to replace these two with just a buck converter, it wouldn't show as a battery and it wouldn't turn on. And then if I do just put, um, you know, two leads to it, then I wouldn't know what's coming from the battery and what's going to the battery from the solder. So there really is no way to make this work, unfortunately. So we won't really be able to test that one. Darn. So what did we learn? It turns out the smallest one was the best, not through total power output, but just power to money ratio. And watch out for weird matte coated ones on AliExpress and similar websites. Also, pretty much every solar panel will get exactly the amount of watts that it says it will as long as you launch them into space because once you have the atmosphere as part of it, you aren't getting it. And then some of them that just outright lie. That 30 watts was ridiculous. I would say buy one with the uh, grommets on the corners so that you could use little carabiners and or different suction cups to mount it to like a backpack or a window. Otherwise, if you don't need that, just get the smallest one if it's going in a go bag. I think if you just find one of these that looks similar to the ones that I have and you can verify it's a gloss coating in the photo and the price looks pretty good and then you get some legitimate reviews or at least legitimate seeming, uh, kind of hard to come across these days, unfortunately. So, you know, stay away from the Chinese ones, but uh, sometimes Amazon ain't really that much better. Uh, most of these were acquired from eBay, actually.
That seems to be the nice middle ground where you can buy from someone in America that's just a Chinese company operating in America that just has a warehouse. They import it themselves and sell it here just to save on shipping time. And while well, shipping costs on their end as well. You're going to pay a couple bucks more, but generally I've found that it's, it's worth it. And then the big frame ones, um, I have never seen that largest one with the aluminum frame, which is fragile, stiff, hard to carry, you know, just generally bad. Never seen that thing exceed 10, and I think it was rated for 10. So considering you can get upwards of five or six from, you know, the smaller ones, that's what I would go with. They've got a little flex to them. They're practically indestructible. And if you get one with a type A socket instead of a type C socket, you're going to get a lot better deal. Because they're trying to get rid of those, of course. Now, you'll never get it above about 10 watts on the buck converter in all likelihood because they pretty much cap at 2.1 amps at 5 volts for the spec, so you might as well get one right around or below 10 watts anyway. And then you're all set. Now, if you're trying to fast charge, you know, you get like a 50 or 100 watt panel, you can't really carry it. So I think we've just reached the ideal um, combination, which is just get a smaller, cheaper one. Type A, no frills, no bells and whistles. And watch out for the ones that are a little bit too good to be true, because that one with the bad coating was only $6 free shipping. Yikes. So thanks for watching. If you want to see some more cool uh, gadgetry and electronics in the prepper realm, there's not many of us out there. A lot of 60-year-old guys running around in the woods talking about uh, typical same old bushcraft stuff. Nothing wrong with that. It's just, uh, well, I work in IT and I know electronics. And these days, well, gadgets like your phone are pretty darn tough, pretty durable, and have a multi-year usable life rating. So, uh, so subscribe to see more. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.